Sean from What Up? Welcome back to another video. Today we're doing our very first book review here on the channel with A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Moss. About two weeks ago I announced that I'd be doing book reviews um, and a lot of people were really receptive to it. They thought it was a great idea. A bunch of people suggested this book, uh, not just here on the channel, but also uh, in uh, social media where I was kind of asking some questions. At work, at home, uh, so my, my professional, my personal life, a lot of people suggested this book. I'd never heard of it before um, and once I started looking into the book, I'm shocked I hadn't how big the book is and how far reaching the fandom is, but uh, um, yeah, I hadn't heard of it before, so we're going to review it here in the channel. Now, I'm going to structure this review in much the same way I do all the other reviews of my channel. It'll be the first half spoiler free, so I'll talk about the book in very general terms. I likely won't talk about anything that you won't read on the back of the dust jacket or like the back of the book. Um, so the very short summary that you can see by walking by the book, that's about as deep as we'll go into specifics. Um, my thoughts and feelings in the book, uh, I'll give it a rating out of 10 and whether I recommend it or not. We'll give a full spoiler warning for the rest of the video and the second half of the video will be full spoilers and I'll back up my uh, thoughts and opinions with specific examples from the book and we'll talk about things in much more specific terms. So if you don't like spoilers and you haven't read the book, first half of the video is for you. If you don't mind spoilers or if you have read the book, second half is for you. And I'm really interested to see um, how my thoughts and feelings of the book line up to everyone else's because... People really love this book. Um, all right, so before I jump into the review, I want to say that everything I say in this book is my own thoughts and feelings. It's how I feel about it. It's um, from my own perspective. I do not anticipate or expect anyone to feel the same way I do about this. Um, so you can tell I'm kind of waffling. I, I didn't enjoy the book. So so this this book here, Court of Thorns and Roses, what's it about? Well, it's a romanticy book. If you don't know what romanticy is, it's a fusion between romance and fantasy. Essentially, they have some element, uh, elements of fantasy and some elements of a romance book, and they kind of cram them together, which is a hugely, hugely popular genre of books right now. Um, and you're probably thinking, John, romanticy is probably so far outside your wheelhouse. Maybe that's why you didn't enjoy the book. It's not entirely true. I do read romanticy. It's my wife's favorite genre. So when she picks up something that she thinks I would enjoy, she lets me know we read it together. And I've read some real bangers, some really, really good romanticy books. In fact, K.F. Breen, uh, The Demigods of San Francisco, Sin and Chocolate, one of the best romanticy series I've ever read in my life. It does everything right. Uh, believable, um, well-rounded, well-thought-of characters. Uh, a, a love triangle that works, uh, a lot of conflict that works, um, just the right amount of spice or smut, uh, and just the right amount of elements of fantasy, and backstories for everything. Everything is well flushed out. It's a very well written, um, very easy to follow series. Um, it does all the things that, in my opinion, Court of Thorns and Roses does not do. So what's the book about? Well, The Court of Thorns and Roses follows Freya. She is a young 19-year-old girl whose family is destitute. And she is hunting to support them. She kills a wolf, and in doing so, she unwittingly breaks a treaty. So a man-beast arrives at her door and says, A life for a life, you have to come live with me. She shrugs her shoulders and says, Okay, and goes and lives with him. And then uh, the rest of the book is about her time in uh, the realm of the Fae. He's a fairy, of course. Um, and her interactions with other Fae. So um, the premise sounds really good. I mean, it does sound like it has some some very good potential there. Um, but you run into the problem that none of the characters in the book are fleshed out at all. Uh, they're very stereotypical, cookie-cutter archetypes of characters that by reading a few lines about this character, you know exactly what the character's motivations are going to be. You know exactly how they're going to act and think in any situation because the, the very stereotyped type of that character would do those things. And that's how they basically run every character in the whole book. Every character is an extreme stereotype of what that character should be. So they'd spend very little time uh, with the characters to ascertain their motivations, to build them up, to make you feel like you are with them on this adventure. It just doesn't happen. Um, and the same can be told for the plot. So the plot of the book essentially um, follows very, very closely to fairy tales. So the first portion of the book is Cinderella. The second portion of the book is Beauty and the Beast. The third portion of the book, nothing much happens. And then it dives into a few other fairy tales later on, and I don't really want to get into right now because it'll spoil some things, but essentially if you know the stories of these fairy tales, which most people do, 
you can understand the plot of that por portion of the book. So because of that, they spend very little time on it. It's just a, they rush to a conclusion. They rush to the next thing. They rush to the next thing. Um, they don't spend enough time world building. They don't spend enough time building the characters. They don't spend enough time with the characters so you can ascertain their motivations. Um, you don't care about these characters when you're reading the book. Um, in addition to that, I hate saying this, uh, but in my opinion, A Court of Thorns and Roses is not well written either. Um, it's not just the structures and how they laid things out. It was hard to read because of the way it was written. Um, I hit walls when I read this book. Like, this book is 413 pages long, and I don't know if you folks can see the type in it, but the font is quite big. It's not a long book, not by any stretch of the imagination. This is a book that I thought I could sit down and read in an afternoon with a cup of coffee, maybe some some, uh, some biscuits or some fruit, and just, you just, you just pound it out in like an hour. Pardon the pun. <laughs> but, nope. This, this thing took me over two weeks to read because it kept hitting walls. I'd read a section of the book and set it down and go, my goodness, I can't read any more of this. It's terrible. I will say that my wife, who is a massive romantic fan, hit the same walls at the same spots I did, which is probably a good thing considering we're married and we probably have similar tastes. Um, but uh, yeah, it was, it was something that if I hadn't announced on the channel, if I hadn't have talked to people that I was going to review this book in the channel, I would have stopped reading it. I wouldn't have finished it. I would have put it on the shelf without a second thought. And I hate to waste money. I am not a rich man by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, and this book was $35. This this paperback was $35. Uh, my wife got the Kindle version for $12. Bucks. Um, the only reason I got physical is so I could show it on the on, on the channel. And I regret it. That There's so, much, so many better things I could have spent that money on. Um, and I, I wouldn't normally spend money on something and not finish it. If I hadn't talked about it with you guys, I wouldn't have finished it. That's that's how much I dislike the book. So, uh, as far as the review of the book goes, um, I think you get my general thoughts and feelings on this. Uh, essentially, uh, I didn't feel the characters were done well. I didn't feel the plots were done well. I didn't feel the world building was done well. I didn't feel the interactions was done well. There was no secondary conflicts. The conflicts felt very tacked on and very incidental to the story. Um, I didn't care about any of the characters at all, uh, which, which is odd because usually when I get into a book, I really care about them. Uh, the best way to describe this book is you're at work. You work all day, 10, 12 hours, 16 hour day. You, you work a much longer day than you normally would. You come home and you are starving. Everyone's in bed. You go to the fridge, you take out a Tupperware of soup that they had for supper, and you sit down with it, and you look at it, and there's something terribly wrong with this soup. It doesn't look right. You start eating it, and you can tell that the entire family's picked over the soup. They have taken out everything in it, anything that's good, and they've watered the broth down to make it look like there's more. So you are eating this watery, terrible tasting broth because you're hungry. You, you eat it anyway. And about three quarters way through your bowl of soup, you come across a piece of turnip. And this turnip is old, it's leathery, it's not spiced well, it doesn't fit, it's kind of half rotten, and you eat it and it's not great, but it's better than the broth. I'm not saying this is a good book. I'm saying three quarters of the book is the broth, the last quarter of the book, when they introduce the conflicts and things that happen, is that turnip. It's not done well, it's not great, but it's better than the rest of the book. So, if I had to give a review of this one, 2 out of 10 is what I would rate the book. And the 2 is just because is it tried. It tries very hard to be something that I believe it is not. Um, and I'll give it 2 points for trying. Um, I would not recommend this book to anyone. This is in a no recommend pile behind me here. I'm going to chuck it in the, the corner. I'm going to file under G for garbage. Uh, I will never look at this book or this series again. Um, so those are my thoughts on it. Now, we're going to get to the spoiler section where I can back up some of my horrible, horrible accusations of this book with some uh, specifics. All right, so full spoiler section. So from this point on, uh, if you haven't already read the book or don't like for spoilers, before more about plot points, character arcs from the book, from the book rather, uh, for the rest of this video. So when I was reading this, I took notes. I took, I took a lot of notes um, because I wanted to make sure uh, of my thoughts through it. And I had to stop. I had to stop taking notes because the notes were the same. They're always the same. And it was always... They didn't spend any time 
building the world. They didn't spend any time building the characters, the plot. None of it was built. It just all kind of happened willy-nilly. So like I said in the first part of the video, the first five chapters are essentially Cinderella. Uh, you're following Freya, a young 19-year-old girl whose family is destitute. The father lost her fortune, and he's also... Um, just like he he also has physical deformities and he can't work and he's just kind of sad all the time and he's not really part of the book he's just there uh she has another step uh, another sister rather i said stepsister because i'm thinking cinderella but another sister who is um not very bright at all and she is cruel because she doesn't understand she's being cruel because she's not smart enough to understand that she's being cruel and she's cruel to uh freya and then you have the actual cruel stepsister um, who is just, I said stepsister, actual cruel sister, who is just mean to her just because. It wants the finer things in life and wants, wants all these things. It is Cinderella. The first five chapters is Cinderella. It's very blatant that they didn't spend much time building the story or the world or building the characters because you already know them from Cinderella. And, that, and that's pretty much what it is. Next five chapters is when she agrees to go spend time with Tamlin in the realm of the Fae. Um, it's Beauty and the Beast. It is 100% Beauty and the Beast. She rails against him. He is mean. He is evil. She wants to go home to her horrible family, even though she didn't want to be with them in the first place. Um, and she eventually comes to like him. Uh, at this point, when she's with Tamlin uh, in, in, his, in the Realm of the Fade, you get introduced to a few other people. Lucian is one of them. It's Tamlin's friend. And I thought... Great opportunity for love triangle and conflict earlier on in the book. Nope. He's just there to spend time with her when Tamlin can't. That's pretty much what he does. Um, and then you find out a little bit about the wider world. You find out that there are different courts, uh, which is the Court of Thorns and Roses. So you have the Spring Court, Summer Court, Fall Court, uh, Winter Court, Dawn Court, Night Court. Um, not the one with Molly Shannon. Uh... You have all of these different sections of, of land owned by high lords, and Tamlin happens to be the high lord of his court, uh, and they're all being destroyed by a blight uh, and monsters, uh, which is essentially coming from one horrible fairy who is, you know, kind of doing all of this stuff. Um, and eventually, she captures Tamlin and a lot of the other high lords, and uh, Freya says, I'm going to go save him. I'm going to do this. I'm going to find out. And I'm going to save him. And there's no preparation. There's no enhancing her skills. There's no whatever. She is just as normal as she's been throughout the entire series. Except at this point, you realize and you learn that she cannot read or write. She's illiterate. Um, and that becomes a very important point for one chapter. Because she's trying to write a letter home. And you're like, it's really weird. It felt shoehorned in and weird. It's because that when she goes to fight the last fairy, the fairy says, you have to solve a riddle, complete three tasks, and I'll let Tamlin go. Very, very basic uh, elements of, of, of fantasy and lore writing. Um, and one of those tasks involve reading, which she can't do. So she meets someone else called Reese. He is who I think will eventually be the, um, the love triangle or the conflict between her relationship with Tamlin. Uh, and uh, he helps her in exchange for her spending a week a month at his estate. So essentially the whole book is her being owned by different fairy lords uh, or setting up being owned by different fairy lords later on. Um, very reminiscent of the Romantic series or uh, uh, genre uh, that happens a fair bit, um, but not done well. Uh, none of it's written well. None of it comes out well. It just, it just is so bland and so blah. Even reading the last six or seven chapters of the book when they were in the midst of the big battle at the end i felt nothing for any of these characters i didn't care if they succeeded i really it didn't i just wanted to get through the book so like i said in the spoiler free section this is a two out of ten at best for me uh, it is not a book i would recommend to anyone which is odd because this book like i said earlier has a massive following you're talking millions and millions of people around the world love these book series they love them um, and I, I guess it's just not for me. This, this, A Court of Thorns and Roses is not for me. Not that Romanticy isn't for me. I've read some and I've liked it. This particular series is not great. Um, 
don't know how it got to be so popular and how, how it got pushed so much, but it is not something that I enjoyed at all. It's not something my wife, who is a massive romantic fan, enjoyed. In fact, she felt the same way as me. She wanted to stop reading it and throw it away. <laughs> but she paid for it, so she, she had to read it. Um, yeah. And then you have these reviews. Passionate, violent, sexy, and daring. USA Today. This book was none of those things. Very little violence. Almost no passion. Not sexy. I don't know what they mean by daring. Hits the spot for fans of dark, lush, sexy fantasy. Kirkus Reviews and A Court of Mist and Fury. So that's one of the other books later on. Um, no. Kirkus Reviews, I will not... I, I, I don't believe you. And then finally, you have fast-paced and explosively action-packed book list on A Court of Winds and Ruins. So what's interesting about this is you have on the book itself, praise by USA Today, right there, Passion of Violence, Sexy and Daring, true page turner, and the rest of them are for books later on in the series. So maybe the series gets better as it goes on. For this particular book, it turned me off so much, I will not read the rest of the series. Uh, I'm not a big fan of give it till book four for it to get good. It has to be at least a little good or some redeeming elements for me to continue on in the series. Um, so I don't know who does the reviews at USA Today, uh, but I will say that I would definitely say Passionate Violence, Sexy and Daring, a true page turner is, at least in my opinion, totally false. <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh, 2 out of 10, do not recommend, didn't enjoy it at all. So... Let me know in the comments down below what you folks thought of it, that you read it. I know a lot of you have read it, and you were very anxiously awaiting my reviews, and I feel very, very badly uh, if you folks enjoyed this book and it was something you loved that uh, I kind of didn't enjoy it. That's okay. Just because I didn't enjoy it doesn't shouldn't it decrease anyone else's enjoyment of this book whatsoever. It is not something I would recommend in any way, shape, or form, but a lot of other people really seem to enjoy it. In fact, it was recommended to me a lot by a lot of people. So there's something in here that people like. Uh, I, I personally don't see it, but if you enjoy the book, great. So let me know in the comments down below what you thought of it. If you've read the book, if you enjoyed it or not, if you agree or disagree, uh, and I, I fully expect a lot of disagreement with some of the things I said today about things I said about the book. Um, and if you have any other books that you want me to review for my next book review here on the channel, uh, I'm hoping for something I enjoy and that I could say is really great. But uh, this, unfortunately, was not it. Thanks so much for sticking with us here to the very end. Here's to many more.